Let's talk about New Zealand culture and what makes it unique. Today we're going to talk about four different areas, Maori Pacifica culture, food culture, sport culture, and the outdoor culture. You're not going to want to miss this. I'm just kind of going to go through just a brief overview of each of how I think that these uh, cultures are unique here in New Zealand, but also some stories and some personal experiences within it as I've lived here for seven years. Here we go. If you're thinking about moving to New Zealand, definitely reach out to me. Definitely check out my training hub uh, at kiwiamericans.com. It has everything you need. If you're thinking about moving here, if you're traveling here for a year, if you're gonna be here for a couple of months, it's great because it helps you prepare to come to New Zealand, like what to bring, all the questions that you have. It also helps you set up life here if you're gonna be here for a year or more. And it also teaches you about the culture, a little bit about what we're talking about today, but much more in depth. And it just kind of helps you understand how to function well in work culture here, how to function well in school culture and so forth. So check it out if you are moving or planning on coming to New Zealand for any significant amount of time, you're gonna want this training hub. All right, let's dive in. Let's talk about our first type of culture. What makes New Zealand amazing and unique is its Maori culture. It's amazing here. Now, just a little bit of statistics. Now, we did just do a 2023 census, and I can't get any of those actual numbers, but based on, um, you know, just kind of Googling it for 2022, 17% of the population is Maori, uh, about 8% of the population is Pacifica, which would be the different Pacific Islands. And there, if you don't know, there's just under 5 million people here in New Zealand. So it's not a big place. There's not a lot of people, but it, it and that's what contributes to it being so amazing because there is so much untouched land, which I'll talk about in a minute, but it's just, it's, and it's people make it so special. So let's talk about specifically some details that I found when I came here uh, quite unique about the Maori culture. Now the history with the indigenous culture here has not been great, uh, you know, similar to many other countries that had to deal with the British, right? <laughs> and people colonizing and coming and taking things that they, you know, didn't agree and all, all the miscommunication that happened. So that definitely happened here uh, in New Zealand. And then it went through a period of time where um, yeah, like it just, it was like people weren't even admitting that they were Maori. They couldn't speak their language. They almost kind of snuffed out the language completely and slowly but surely it has with some, some leaders in the country has started to say, Hey, you know, this is part of who New Zealand is. This needs to be integrated into our culture. And it's amazing. So when you come here, so if you're from New Zealand, you don't you don't understand this when you grow up in a different culture who doesn't treat their indigenous people very well um, to a culture that now looks like they do an enormous amount and you know not you know i mean there's arguments as to like you know is it enough and like everybody's not feeling but comparatively maybe from australia from the us like the way that it's starting it's it's moving in the right direction Let's just say that. And it's just amazing how they're starting to get integrated into culture because so much of what makes New Zealand, Aotearoa so amazing is its history, its geography, its people. And, and so you, ha you have to count that in. And so it's just amazing. You just see Maori culture just integrated in society. And you see it when your kids go to school and they um, take te reo Maori, they learn uh, the kapahaka, they, they, they learn just a lot of things and a lot of cultural things and it's great. And like teachers use the language often. I have to start off meetings at work with a katakia, which is like kind of a Maori prayer, kind of, um, a little bit hard to explain. Um, it's used in, the language is used in, in very common communications and emails and it's just great. It's very integrated in society because I think what I, I really think it's great because the Maori culture really represents what makes New Zealand so wonderful. The values of that culture are what makes it so welcoming. It just, it's such a welcoming place and it stems from that because they believe that if you come onto our land, you should be welcomed and you should be valued. And that's what's 
it's so noticeable when you come from it from from my experience it might be you know i'm not from everywhere i don't have everybody's experience but when i came here it felt so welcoming and it's just integrated and whether people are maori or not or they're european descent it's just if you grew up here that's normal the very welcoming the very accepting the very interested in who you are what you can bring here you know just like a truly wants to know you wants to really be known and that just that has to go down as one of the most amazing things about new zealand and i hear it over and over and over because i, I work with a lot of immigrants i have you know people that have come here and no matter where they're from that's the feeling because it's not something that you have everywhere in the world guys if you've just always lived here and it's just like it's an amazing thing there's no perfect situation but the Maori culture is amazing and it's just so cool. Like everything that it brings, we'll talk about food later, but like, yeah, so, so many things like uh, their marais and how they do things. And it's just, it's, it's quite awesome. And it's been a privilege to get to know it better and to um, meet with different communities and to be a part of learning the language and, and just learning the culture in general, you guys. If you come to New Zealand, you are gonna love the Maori culture. Number two, let's talk about sports culture. So the sports culture in New Zealand is very different than the US. It's not different in that they value sports because they definitely value sports here in New Zealand and the US, they value different sports though. In New Zealand, it's all about cricket, it's about rugby, football is big here. They have what's called netball, which is similar to basketball, but definitely not the same. Uh, and then they have, and they have so many different things. Like there's like, lawn bowling and badminton is a big sport here and it's just very cool they have a very very strong sports culture and it's part of the identity here and so when we first came we definitely kind of dove in and we're learning cricket and we're learning you know uh rugby and it's just like watching watching the all blacks watching different rugby teams around the country it they're just they're amazing <laughs> they just they literally make it look really easy <laughs> when it's not and they just make it look so smooth and easy and it's very cool and it's very different and you know like the you know, so you see kids they're playing with rug, rugby balls which is very different than it looks similar but it's not the same as the american football and they're passing backwards not forward you know and so everything is just a little bit different i haven't been able to get my kids too like gung-ho about one of the uh, sports here in New Zealand, you know, they have tended towards basketball, towards volleyball, more um, common sports in the U.S. And that's fine. But uh, they've tried, some have tried uh, netball and uh, so, and they, what's good about it is that they have to do it in school. They have to know the sport. So they like, I'm like, you guys should at least try it. Right. <laughs> uh, but what's cool about New Zealand also is that you can have, there's so such variety. Like I like think of something and they have it here and you could do it. There's, there's something for everybody. There's some, every little kind of crazy little activity that you like to do, they have it here. And so that's, what's really, really cool. And so they get into sports. Um, they're not, I, they're definitely into sports, but I wouldn't say that uh, New Zealanders, and this has just been my experience. So, you know, let me know your experience. <laughs> they're not like, they're not so extreme over the top where it like affects their mood for the rest of the week if somebody loses. And you know, there's a little bit of, you know, there's excitement and people get, you know, into it and it's great, but it's it's not it's not everything. And that's, you know, it's it, what I'm saying is it has its rightful place where <laughs> I know um, American sports and sports and they know all these details and they know everything and then they play on fantasy teams and it's like it consumes their life and it's all year. And, and that's not everybody either, but the sports culture um, in the US is different because they're valuing different things. Uh, we still follow uh, a lot of the American NFL and the NBA and you know, because that's just who we are, right? Uh, and so, and a lot of people do that as well here. But yeah, the sports culture is very strong. So a couple personal stories that I would share about this that might be interesting to you is What's cool about the sports culture here, so like in the US, like if you are, if your kid is like in high school or middle school and they wanna play a sport and it's like say the winter season or the spring season or the fall season, they're only playing one sport. But in New Zealand, they'll play, they don't practice every day. Like 
two times a week on one sport would be a lot. And it all varies, but I'm just, just talking in general. But so they get so people can technically play multiple sports in a season. So in a spring season, they could be in multiple sports, uh, or they could be in sports in school and then have you know be in a club team on the weekends uh, in a totally different sport like tennis or football. Um, and so yeah, so that was really different when we came here, and it's actually really good because I think that the athletes here are amazing like people are real athletes here you know they're not just their bodies aren't conditioned in one way and we have noticed uh because our family is big in volleyball and my husband coaches and that 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 helps you know like badminton players tennis players make really good servers on a on a volleyball team and you know and so and it all translates but then they're what what we're seeing is like they're just overall good athletes because um their muscles haven't been conditioned one way that they can do so many different things that makes them more agile and just really good athletes so the sports culture is very cool um and um very very much a, a big thing and like so can you play sports when you're an adult yeah they have a lot of different things especially i mean new zealand definitely values rugby and cricket right so the and football they have so many options for that and you know even options to like go on and coach and everything after that and that's just much more subsidized and and yeah they have money behind it because they value it and that totally makes sense but as an adult, you can also do a lot of things. There's just so many different things, even just in the small town that I'm in, all the different exercise <laughs> options and different crazy things that you can do. And that's not even touching on the outdoors and all of the free things that you can do outside uh, in New Zealand. And that will bring me into my next topic when we talk about the outdoor culture. All right, number three, let's talk about the outdoor culture of New Zealand. Oh, guys, if you are not outdoorsy, if you don't like the outdoors, I don't think New Zealand's for you. I'm just gonna say that because I tell people the best things in New Zealand are free. The outdoor culture is amazing. Uh, so like some of the things that they're really known for would be all of the hiking. They have the great walks here, like unbelievable. Just look them up if you like hiking, um, tramping or backpacking. Skiing is huge here. Surfing is amazing here. Um, so many outdoor activities and it's just everywhere. Mountain biking is huge. I'm probably missing some. These are just off the top of my head, but these are like the big ones. And um, the landscape and it's just so beautiful. It's green all year. And I mean, I guess maybe not as much in the South Island if it gets colder, or if there's snow, but it's, you guys, if you love the outdoors, you're gonna love New Zealand and it, and it just, it just speaks to it's definitely i included it because i there's so many things i could include i was just trying to like let's just narrow in on the main things the outdoor feel of new zealand affects you living here it's not you can't ignore it and it's not ignorable and they value it and they they treat it well not perfectly they treat it well and um, it thrives, they don't overbuild on it, they respect it in a lot of ways compared to where I'm from. The birds, the, the, uh, the wildlife here, I, it's just part of the feeling that you get when you're here. It's part of like the, the, the oceans, the sea, the, it's, just, it's just, it's part of the culture here. You can't ignore the outdoor nature of everything, the landscapes and all the activities and it just kind of defines what you do like there's always a lot of talk about the wind and the weather and the all the other that sort of thing and yeah so if you love the outdoors you're gonna love new zealand and the fourth cultural uniqueness of new zealand is the food culture i have saved the best for last now the food culture here in new zealand has a lot of influences so you have maori influence you have um, British influence is quite strong, Pacific influence, Asian influence, Indian influence. There is such a variety of food, it's great. But some key food items that you will definitely have to try when you come to New Zealand uh, would be their fish and chips, uh, very commonly bought on Fridays and eaten on the beaches. Uh, you have pavlova, which is this amazing dessert. And I make it for everybody that comes here. And that's probably the one food item that that when people come visit me in New Zealand and have that, they're making it at, 
in the US. They, they take that with them. They're taking the pavlova with them because it's the most amazing. It's a very light meringue dessert. It's a great summer dessert. Anyway, uh, meat pies, sausage rolls. That was a whole new concept. Took me a while to try them. Now I probably like them too much. <laughs> but yeah, and just the way they do things, uh, the cafes, like, you know, like kind of even what they eat in the morning. I have done plenty of videos on the different food items, like their uh, beans on toast or uh, let's see, some other common breakfast items. What would it be? You know, lots of avocado on toast and eggs benedict is big. And you get all of this in the States as well. But I'm just saying it's just more, I would just say they eat it more and there's not as much variety in terms of i would say breakfast food like if you go to cafes it's going to be quite similar what they're going to have on every menu you know they're going to have the eggs benedict they're going to have the pancakes they're going to have maybe no not always waffles um let's see what else what else do they have or the, there's always the cheese scones or the date scones or you know sometimes a muffin not always uh, and then and then every cafe of course is unique and that's the other thing about New Zealand is that they're not chains They're not chain restaurants chain Breakfast places they're not Starbucks everywhere. It's it's mom-and-pop, you know unique uh, Small businesses like real families running small businesses, which contributes to the food culture considerably because when you go into a new town or a new city like you have to figure out where to eat and try new things and just be open to trying new things and you can always ask around people love to tell you where you sh where they get where they think you get the best coffee what the best indian food is what you know <clears throat> the best turkish food is and you can just always ask and people will tell you but just go for it. Um, it's great. It, it keeps it interesting. And, um, you know, unfortunately they do still have all of the American fast food. We've got McDonald's, Burger King, Subway, Pizza Hut, Domino's, uh, Wendy's in some locations, Carl's Jr. in some locations. So there is that. If you're just feeling like something that you just want to eat something that you're familiar with, uh, you do have those options. But yeah, the food culture is, Oh, it's so good. And it's very, I, I would say overall, I would say that the food feels very British to me. Like <clears throat> there's so many things that were new and I was like, what is this? And that's because it's, <laughs> it's very British and not American. Right. And I've talked about that in other videos, so you can watch those, but yeah, the food culture is great. It may take a little bit getting used to, um, they're, like they don't allow a lot of the crap ingredients that they allow in the US and their fruits and vegetables are so amazing. Their meats are so amazing, their seafood. You guys, you're gonna love it here. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the video today. Please comment below and let me know your thoughts on your experience with the New Zealand culture and what you think makes it unique because I would love to hear about it and I will see you guys next week.